I can hear you <laughs> perfectly, bro. What's popping, man? Nothing much, man. I'm happy to have you having me on, man. Really appreciate the opportunity. Man, we had to connect because we're doing the same event together, so might as well connect, bro. Yes, sir. I, I tried to reach out to all the speakers, you know, just to get a feel, especially with people that's doing things that's, you know, abnormal, which is actually normal. But, you know, just connected with people that that's actually moving and shaking out here. That's the biggest thing, learning from each other, man. Right, right, right. Seeing think, how you can serve. I don't think as a culture we do that enough, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No, you, you're right. We're too busy chaining each other down, being envious and jealous. Mm-hmm. Crabs in the barrel. Joneses, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. that's passing knowledge back and forth because that's how that's how the other culture does it. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm talking about. Right, so, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, man, like, I know you deal with, like, with, with mental health and mental strength, right? Mm-hmm. And, and really bring that to the forefront for, for, for the culture. Right. How's... Give give people an example and, and, and exactly what you try to do out there. Or what not try, exactly what you do. My bad. Um, so my start and my journey uh with mental health came by accident. So just like we talked about earlier, um, I knew I wanted to write a book, I knew I wanted to speak, have a podcast, or it was a radio show then, but I knew I wanted to have all these things and um I just didn't know what my thing was gonna be. And it wasn't until I started going through my mental struggles and, you know, having my own issues and I was doing my research and it started to look like, like depression and anxiety and suicide that that happened to other people that happened to white people, white women, older women to be exact. So when I was looking at the commercial and then they used to ask them questions, I'm like, I feel these things, but she don't look like me. So once I started doing my research and, you know, just really started doing it, thinking I found, I ran across a couple of interviews, especially with a black man talking about depression. I was like, so if it's me looking for somebody that's feeling these things, but it doesn't, there's nobody out there looking like me, why would I think I have any of those things where I found out that mental struggles don't just apply to one type of, hold on. I'm sorry about that. No, you good. Mental struggles don't just apply to one type of community; they apply to every community. But that I only, I'm only talking about the one community that I know. So um, the reason I did that was because if I didn't know, then it's a bunch of other people that don't know. So I just said I was gonna be that that you know that voice of of the you know that communicator that can really relay the message back and forth. Like, hey, look, this is what it looked like. It may look different like this, but if you feeling this, this is what it is. No, I think you're right. I think the the culture doesn't talk about it enough. It's almost taboo, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's 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 everyone goes through it. It's hidden. You don't we, you don't want to be looking like you're weak, mm-hmm. or, or like you said, it happens to white people. It happens to somebody mm-hmm. else. It happens to us. And it's far from the truth because we also bastardize the therapy part of it. Right. Just being crazy. The, the whole label of just being crazy. Right. And it's beyond that, right? It's, it's, right. It's, 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 I think what I quit to, what I tell people a lot is like it's like this, right? Back in the day, if somebody had autism or some type of other challenge, they were just covered retarded. Right. That's it. Right. right. And, and now, especially with mental health, it was always just called you. You're fucking crazy. Right. But now it's not that. Like you said, anxiety, stress. I'm I'm really from Brooklyn, from New York, and mm-hmm. I didn't know I was stressed out and had anxiety until I moved up into Atlanta. Right, because I I was I was doing the same thing I was doing from New York to Atlanta, but I'm checking behind my back. I'm looking to see who's gonna try to rob me all the time, mm-hmm. like, and I'm always on this hyper stage. And everybody said, "Yo, relax. We ain't trying to get you. No one's like, right. Why are you, well, you so right, 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 right? Almost had a mean grill because you know you can't look weak. Mm-hmm. So mentally, I was just screwed up. And as men, we're told from a, from a small age, "Yo, don't cry." Right. Don't tap into your emotions. Right, right, Put right. Put that aside. That, that, right. that's, that's a woman. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that messes us up as men as well through our lives because then we can't connect with relationships. Right. And we can't connect with kids. And then that's when we have, you know, fatherless children. And we've been taught not, not to feel, basically. Like, we're not yeah. allowed to feel. Absolutely. Absolutely, bro. Which is insane. You know what I'm saying? It's like, now all these things are surfacing. But I think it's because people like yourself who really want to take a stance on it and say, yo, I'm a strong black man. Mm-hmm. But guess what? I have these issues. 
Right, and I wanted to be like, I, and when I go to the schools and 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 talk to children, or even high schools and even college, talking to them people that's younger than me, um, I tell them I won't stop until mental health is just like physical education. It should be in schools, just like physical education is. But you, I don't know how you prioritize the body, but not the mind. Like that should be yeah. the, the body doesn't matter if the mind's not right. So absolutely, that's been my main goal of like, if I can get that, and that's a big goal, but I want it to be one that's permanent and, and, and it starts to be a staple within our community and communities worldwide, because it should be, it should be prioritized just as big as physical education. No, I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, if we go to school, we're forced to learn curriculum. It has nothing to do about us being human, our psyche. Mm-hmm you know, how to handle certain situations. We're mm-hmm. never prepared when we leave school. Mm-hmm. And we have some foundational stuff, reading, math, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, some science. But other than that, as humans, we're so disconnected from ourselves. Right. We don't know how to tap into who we are. And then right. we're forced to act like we're someone else. Right. But we're so confused. Right. Because we think the inner selves, who we are, is not right for the outer world. Mm-hmm. I can't introduce myself to you as who I am because you may not like me. You might judge me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which is crazy. And the one message I, I, I give when I go out too is the fact that we shouldn't all feel alone in a room full of people. Yeah. And the only reason why we all feel alone is because everybody is trying to hide their struggles one one hiding place more than the other. Like, I don't want them to know this about me. I don't want this to know this about me. Where in reality, we all got our own ish that we going through. All, all, all that stuff that we have, that emotional baggage and trauma and stuff that's going on inside. Um, it, we try to hide it and bury it and act like it's non-existence until you blow up or have a, a, a crazy attack or, you know, anxiety or a heart attack or just uh, like a lot of things happen because it was this built up, pent up emotion that you, you felt like you weren't allowed and freely to have um, put out there to the world. So, again, that's just when my message is trying to get people more comfortable in sharing their stories to know that they're not alone. That's why I have my podcast just like you to just because I know that I'm only one person speaking one perspective and I can't uh, speak for a woman who was raped or a child who was molested or, or, or a drunken dad or, you know, just people that have these different individualized stories. And I. But there are also people, as much as there's an individual story, there are people who went through the same thing, but they're only individualized because no one's spoken up and say, hey, I was raped or hey, I wasn't. And you do have those stories, but just different part of like even being LGBT, just going into the mind and sitting down with a straight person like, listen, this is what I'm really going through. And no one having the courage or the audacity to actually sit down and try to bring those stories to life. So let, let's let's go back a little bit. So why don't you explain to people your story and how you got to where you're at now? Uh, in what aspect? And as far as mental health or yeah, mental health? <laughs> absolutely. All right. So my story started way before I was born. Um, I before I was even thought of. Um, my sister and my mo- and my father, they had all had mental struggles. They all had things that they were going through. All had uh, different issues. And before I was born, my sister's five years older than me. Before I was born, my grandmother, who's my dad's mom, um, said to my mother, like, don't have any more of those demon children. And what she meant by that was because of all of the mental struggles that my dad put my mom through, my grandmother through, and even going along with my sister, she was like, you need to cut that DNA short right now because you're going to have struggles all your life. So if you so she thought she was doing a protective thing by saying that, like, stop it right now because he's going to give you hell. And so um, that was that part of the story that I found out later on talking to my mom because and I, on, the way that I got that story out of her was the fact that I just kept having these visions of, like, like doing bad stuff. Like, when I was in school, like, what happens, what would happen if I push these kids down the stairs or – what would happen if I go in this corner store and just start tossing everything where, but I also had good visions of like speaking life into people, speak, uh, helping people across the street, just doing good things. And when I came to my mom and I asked her like, um, about those visions, she was like, Oh, y'all just crazy. That's just that Howard blood. But that didn't stop the visions. (laughs) um, 
it, it, it was when I came to my sister and my dad, they knew exactly what I was talking about. Um, so I, w- I it started there and it started bubbling, but it didn't really rear its ugly head until I had my first son and I was uh, not a man basically yet. I didn't have my dad in my life. He was in and out since I was two years old. Um, I felt so worthless. I'm like, who am I to raise somebody when I don't have the tools to be the dad, a uh, dad that uh, that I didn't have? So I didn't have my dad around. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a car. I didn't have any money. I didn't have anything to support this kid. So I was just trying to figure out. I felt worthless. So I was just trying to figure out what, who am I to do this to be a father? So I texted all my friends and family that I felt close to, and it was like, listen, take care of my son. I don't want to be here anymore. And um, I found myself on a bridge ready to commit attempt suicide. And fortunately, one of my best friends came and got me off the bridge, but that still didn't make the pain stop. That still didn't make um, the responsibilities go away. Like I still had those same um, things that I was supposed to do or, or those same roles that I had to step up into. So I wound up taking all these pills and going to sleep. And even then I had to be woken up and shaken up by my godmother because she came and they was calling me all day and night and I wasn't answering. And she was like, life is just too much for him. Like I'm gonna take him to my house. And it was there when I started doing the research that I talked about earlier about depression and buying books on anger management and doing stuff about anxiety and just looking up and doing all these research. And then I stumbled upon into mental health. So that's how that started. And then my podcast, which just celebrated its one year anniversary, the Black Mental Health Podcast. Congrats. I, that started last year, um, July. And then um, my book came out in November 27th of last year. I started speaking in the November, early December. And then, you know, every story has to have like a climax. I get into a car accident where <laughs> they somebody ran the red light and they crashed into me, hit me from the driver's side to the passenger side, had my leg hanging out because it was the bone popped out of the skin, oh. all the nine. And I'm looking up, I'm like, God, why, why now? Why, I, of all times, like I just started building momentum. I found my gift. I found where I was supposed to be. Why would I go now? And I tell people, I'm so grateful that it happened because now everything I was talking about with mental health last year, it gives validation to the story. We see all of these people that motivational speakers and and progress, pro- professional development, and they just hoorah, you can do it, you can run through a brick wall. Let's see if they can do it now, if they had to go through some mental struggle. Now people get to watch and validate my story and what I've been speaking because they get me to watch to go through physical therapy. They get me wa- getting to see me watch, still take care of my family, still do what I can do as being a man, so, um, again, that's the short version of the story. It's a lot in between, but that's how I got started and everything. No, you, see, you said a lot, especially when you say you spoke to your mom about how you were feeling and mm-hmm. pretty much d- dismissed it. It's just as how mm-hmm. it felt, and that's it. Mm-hmm. There was no solution or no empathy to say, hey, how can I help? And right. honestly, because if she wasn't taught how to find help, exactly, she wouldn't be able to help you. Exactly. And And that's a... This is a chain of events that's happening for generation to generation now. Mm-hmm. You know, again, people just dismiss it without knowing. And no fault to them. But at the same time, too, it's like, okay, well, how do I live with this? You're right. You know, how do I move on with this? How do I succeed and, and, and thrive at the same time? Right. And father being in and out, and you feel like you said you wasn't, you don't feel like you was a man yet. That's huge. Mm-hmm. That you knew what you was not of yet. Mm-hmm. Some people don't even know what they want to be, or they want to call themselves out to be something that they're really not. And you already know, you know I'm missing something. Mm-hmm. I gotta find and figure out how to do this. When did therapy come into play? Like, when did it actually come into consistency where it got you to say, "Well, aha, I have this. I can control it this way." See that that that's where my story differs from a lot of people because I'm a big advocate for therapy. But therapy came so late in my life, but because again of what exactly what you just said, I never knew nothing about like ther- therapy was for white old women that had to right. go to therapy. So it, during that time, I had to do my own research, my own self education, find out my own tools and resources to help me cope with some of the struggles that I had to go to. Now my sister, she's in therapy currently. She's been in uh, therapy since she's uh, 15, 16. She's in her 30s now, so she's been in therapy. 
um, my dad went to therapy. I, I went to therapy, fortunately enough, for last year um, from, like, right before my accident from, uh, I want to say October-ish to November around, it was like two months, something like that. I don't remember the time, but um, it it came so far gone after the end and I wanted to do it because I didn't want to be a mental health advocate and never have been to therapy and not to have that, that experience to share the the traditional way and the non-traditional way. So I went there last year and I was like, man, I was fortunate enough to be in, in front of an organization called Black Men Hill and they helped get free therapy for black men to get them in there. So, um, I was fortunate enough to go through their cohort and it was one of the beautiful experiences um, that I've been through because it helped me gain more resources, more insight within myself. And just having that person to be able to like comfort and talk through like that was a big um, help for me. But when I really needed therapy was when I was about to jump off that bridge. That was the time that I should have, somebody should have said like, let's, let's go, let's pull them in therapy. Let's get them some help. But even still then, because people have such a stigma against certain avenues of uh, mental health and it's such a, a, a taboo topic, nobody even considered like, yeah, he, maybe he need to get some counseling or something like that. That's amazing. I think people need to understand what therapy too is that it's also a matching process you have to do. You, you have to find the right therapist for you, mm-hmm. a couple of therapists. And honestly, looking for someone who looks just like you, mm-hmm. you guys with your culture and world, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think people are confused that they don't know that they can do that. that right. They just have to go to the first person they see the pop up on the right. web research. But no, like if, if you're Hispanic, you're black or whatever, you should be looking for that person. Right. They have insight to your culture. They can right. realize a lot more with you. They go into someone who's outside the culture trying to learn from you. Mm-hmm. And trying to learn at the same time. That's a lot to expect someone to help guide you at that point. In 45 minutes, you can't get none of that stuff out in 45 minutes. No, not at all, right? So <laughs> that, I think that's, that's, a, that's the biggest thing that people need to understand and finding something close to home too. You can't make an excuse and say, well, this guy or this woman is on the other side of the town. Hey, you need to do everything you can to make therapy a part of your life. Right. And make sure that it's, it's timed into your schedule. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't, it's not like an afterthought or just something extra to do, but it's a hard imprint in your schedule, you know, at three o'clock, four o'clock, five, I have to hit the spot. And it's not too far from home. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel like it's a chore to get to. That makes sense? No, and that's true. And that, that was, the other resource that I was trying to be was trying to be the, the, the face of, you know, mental health being a, a good thing. So I know a lot of my homies that I grew up with, they will never go to therapy, but they still need the mental health that they should be getting. And so I try to make it, uh, I try to find different clips on, on social media, stuff like that, just to make it seem more realistic than out there than they, they might expect. So everybody's not going to go to therapy. That, like I, and I, feel, I've, I came to the realization that, but that doesn't mean that they shouldn't still get the treatment that they should get for their mental struggles. Even growing up in certain communities, especially in poverty or in, in the quote unquote hood, like we we like like you said earlier, we experience certain things that need to be unpacked. You shouldn't be looking over your shoulder, but you have to for for survival. Sure. You shouldn't have to worry about if the bills are going to be paid or food. Like those are things that's supposed to be automatically given. Like that's uh, I forgot the the guy name, but that's the basis of hierarchy of need. Maslow hierarchy of need. If you don't got those bases, that that is going to have some mental effects and trauma on you. But we don't even realize that it's playing a part on us until we get older and we still battling demons that we never got solved in our childhood. No, you're absolutely right, man. It's, it's a, it's a lot. Like, you know, I was listening to it by my stepmom when I was 11, you know, then growing up in the projects, you know, and my family thought of it was a badge of honor, especially mm-hmm. the men in my family. Oh, you're not a virgin no more. I'm 11 years old. I'm not a virgin no more, but I'm like, I was confused as hell. Why is everyone feeling so happy? And I was like, I was feeling destroyed. I felt confused, you know what I'm saying? And it's, and never got therapy for it until I got into my own very years later until um, I was a, a man and mm. point even then I was like questioning my manhood saying, am I a man? Am I ready for this? Like, what am mm-hmm. I doing? And should I hide this? Should I be open with it? Should I tell people I've been raped, you know, or something like that or molested and what would they think of me? And I came to a point and said, no, I fuck it. I don't care. I, I, that was my mental 
turn around. When I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? I'm going to tell whoever I need to tell. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And take control of it instead of controlling me. Mm-hmm. And being more secure of my manhood and, and, and understand that my manhood means I have to be, I have to have a level of vulnerability as well. Right. And vulnerability doesn't mean that you're weak. You know what I'm saying? Like it means that you, you're willing to take the chance or risk of putting your emotions out there, mm-hmm. whether you may get hurt or not. But you can control that because that's the, that, that, that really depends on the, on the people you surround yourself with. People right. take advantage and want to hurt you, whether you're vulnerable or not, they're going to try to do that regardless. Right. But once you're vulnerable inside in yourself, you open up a whole swath of, of things that you can really go after once mm-hmm. you, your mental status is just wide open. You know what I'm saying? No, no, that's true. You, you're so right. We don't even realize that we're not even living. It's, it, it said, I'm trying to remember the quote specifically. They say, you got two dates you, that's so important. It's the day you die and or the day you're born and the day you're, you've realized why you were born. And sometimes we don't even get to that second day that's important because we haven't unpacked from stuff that's from birth. Right. And we need to sit down and really dig within because I've felt so much freedom in my last, in my latter part of my 20s than I did in my, my, my former because I was able to get past a lot of stuff, fixing a relationship with my father. I had to forgive him. I had to forgive him to get past like, yo, you're not a kid anymore. Like he can't, he can't take you to the ballpark anymore and buy you peanuts or whatever the case may be. But if you still want this relationship, you have to find some common ground. Same thing with my mother. We went through our same thing, and I had to fix that relationship with her. And I understand that not everyone is going to be ready to make those those conversations. But if it's mentally affecting you internally, emotionally, these are things that you have to deal with because you'll never be in a good relationship. I would never have had better relationships with men if I didn't fix a relationship with my father because it was something, some aggression that I was still holding over against him that was making me aggressive in other situations. And if the one man that you were supposed to get respect, honor, and all of those things that you think you should get from other men doesn't have that, you don't have that, you're not going to respect anybody. I would never expect a, respect authority because I don't even respect the man that brought me into this world. So why would I have to do that? So we had to find a common ground, start to understand each other, come, come, to, a, come to a place of peace. But it took some time and some work and some energy. But I, long story short, that that people really had to unpack some of that stuff because it'll it'll be beneficial in the long run. What made you really come up with the idea of starting your podcast? Like, what was that aha moment for you? Um, when I knew I liked to talk, <laughs> like I knew <laughs> I knew that I just like like what we're having right now. I can have this all day, twenty four hours, three sixty five. Yeah, I always say back in the day, if I was a caveman, I would have still been in the caveman talking to people and having them conversations as well. So I started trying to find ways to not only monetize, but like give my place a voice. Like for where, where should I put my voice? So that's when I was like, all right, what's a podcast? I knew nothing about podcasts. So let me figure out what I could do to like, you know, figure that thing out. So I, if again, it was supposed to be radio first. And then I was like, all right, radio is coming, come coming old or whatever the case may be so i'm gonna make it podcast for now and it's easier to start more than what i was trying to do no you're right it's just, it's, it's super easy it's honestly i started out with my, my cell phone mm-hmm. um so my cell phone it was it was no video it was just straight audio mm-hmm. and um i'm telling you it, i think what you're doing here is amazing and that it's it's very well needed you know what I'm saying? So when, like, you know, I, like I said, we, you, you and I both are in a conference in Charlotte, coming up in, in September, um, and it's it's a huge movement because it's it's a minority conference. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we both are going to speak when we be part of a panel, right? To people who are either unsure, mm-hmm. have a dream, um, to people who are maybe just invited and they may they may take a back seat and be quiet to absorb things, but up front of me say, well, I don't need this type of thing. But I think the biggest, the biggest thing is about just really passing on our knowledge for the people to mm-hmm. say, Hey, this is what I've learned. This is what I have to give. Like, I want you to have it. Like, here you go. And that I, I don't see that happening, especially past 20 years, even more where it may have happened in very small pockets, but because of the internet now, because of social media, 
our connections have really become so much more easier now. Man. Right. You know, for us to find each other now, that's huge. You know what I'm saying? Right. And if this was a regular day before the internet, we would have never probably even met. But never crossed paths. Probably never crossed paths. Exactly. And that's a huge, I think people, you know, they, they say they shit about, the, 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 about social media. Mm-hmm. It has its problems. No mm-hmm. doubt about it. But we also tend to use it in the wrong way. You know, mm-hmm. if someone's twerking, it's getting 150,000 views. <laughs> right, 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 if, right. If someone's, you know, catches some kind of crazy stuff happening, it gets a million views. Mm-hmm. But if it's something like this that we're talking about, it's probably going to get some views, but not a lot. Because right. Again, the awareness factor or the fact of, you know what, I'm not going to put this energy on me right now. I can't handle it right now. Who are they? Are they authorities? Yes or no. But it, it's about the story coming out. Like I said, your story coming out, being honest with it. Right. That's what people need to appreciate. No, and I think people don't understand the impact that social media, like you can, you, you have the opportunity. And even with what, what you just said, you have the opportunity to connect with me and you. Now we can connect with each other and people don't look, they use it, like you said, in a bad way, which everybody enjoys a good little story that happened and being yeah. a, being uh, informed of, about it. But honestly, I use it for um, connecting with so many individuals that I probably wouldn't, couldn't have had the same connection with before. And to go back to what you just said earlier about sharing the knowledge and information, it was a point where, I, um, sorry, these flies are getting to me. <laughs> it was a point it was a point where I used to find out information, read books, research, everything that I was just telling you earlier about just having information that not everybody around me was speaking about. And I was sharing with them and they didn't care. It was like, Oh, here he go with this again or da, 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 da. And this, this thing I'm so happy about is I created a platform about mental health. Um, and now people that want to talk to me about it have feel comfortable talking about it. Now I'm attracting those individuals in my life. I'm attracting, I've attracted you into my life before where I probably wouldn't have had, I would have been forced to deal with, with who lived next door to me or who lived around the corner from me or who lived in the same community. Whereas I can connect with somebody in Alaska or California or wherever the case may be and talk about the things that probably will have more impact than the, the, the highlight news of the day or whatever the case may be. So I, I I appreciate you even bringing that up because it is such an impactful thing that we have this tool that we're using called social media and just the internet itself in general. No, you're absolutely right, man. I think it's 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 something where people have to understand that, like you said, like some some people you spoke to felt like you were preachy. Oh, he's here he goes again. Mm-hmm. And then you found the people who say, "Yo, I can relate." Let, let tell me, me more. Yeah, tell me more. Let me follow this dude. Mm-hmm. And that's what people out as a whole have to understand. Like, don't worry, don't worry about the folks who don't connect. Focus on the people you do connect with. Yep. Go deeper. Yep, exactly. And you go hard with those folks. Mm-hmm. Those are gonna be your lifetime audience, right? Mm-hmm. There. You know, so you're not you're not you're not trying to convert nobody. No, nope. that's not the goal. The goal is saying, you know what, where where are where is the audience that feels and sees the world the way I do? Mm-hmm. And, and let me fuck with those people mm-hmm. on a different level. I'm and, currently going through that right now. Like I'm literally connecting with my my social media friends, like one on one basis. Like, and if you don't answer, I'm deleting. There's no use of us being friends or connected if that if we have no value for it towards each other. Absolutely. Like what I do, with everyone on 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 my podcast, and it's getting difficult. I have more and more people on the podcast. Right. At least once a month, I connect with them. I DM right. them, hey, what's going on? What's popping? What's, you know, do you want to promote something? Do you want to feel like you have something in your chest you want to give out? Mm. My, my podcast is Giant Nomad Presents, a platform for the people. Mm. And that's what it's for. It's for the people. I'm just, I'm just a host. Right. Hopefully this thing blows up and someone else will take over and mm-hmm. let the people continue once I'm gone. And, right. And, and that's the biggest thing, giving our folks, our people, our culture, a voice mm-hmm. and a platform that they can actually use and feel comfortable using. Right, you know what I'm saying, and to your point, yeah, like I'm sliding in people's DMs as well, like you know, like, and people, I may get a lot of no's, but right? Then the people who do say yes, great, exactly. right? You know what I'm saying, and those are the people I fuck with. Those are the people we build a relationship with. You know, I had an interview with someone from Kuwait yesterday. Mm-hmm. That's my that's my second person I'm interviewing from Kuwait. Mm-hmm. Kuwait. You know what I'm saying, like those things like that. It's huge, and right. It, 
you start finding that niche, people will hook you up based off of that. Right. And you start gaining your network, building your network. And that Mm -hmm. does help your mental stability as well. Cause now you feel like, Hey, you feel good. Right. Is right. You say things are going right. That does help your mental state to get stronger. You know what? Maybe I am on the right path. Mm-hmm. Fortify this some more. And honestly, that you know, things get bigger. People need to understand. Listen, money is one thing, and mm-hmm. you can chase money all day you want. And hip hop has done a bad job about that by yeah. showing bling, by showing all the money. What they have not shown is the hard work that it takes to create an album. The the hours or weeks they spend in the studio to create that one record or whole album together. If we was to glorify that work ethic behind mm-hmm. it and not just see the rented cars in the video, you know what I'm saying? That would be huge. And right. I really understand, man, it's not easy being an artist, especially touring. There's mm-hmm. no joke. You're doing a 60 city tour around mm-hmm. the world, man, get ready. That's about a year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't, we don't talk about, we don't glorify that part of it. Right. We glorify the other part of it. And it gives people a misperception of, how they should think and how they should, what, should, what they should go after. And I think that's a bad mental feed for the youth as well. Yeah, I don't think people put as much uh, energy in towards like how much hard work really is. Like we say like, yeah, it's going to take some work, but I don't think people really recognize it. Like I'm up from 5.30 to 11 every day, uh, most days. And I'm still squeezing family time in there. I'm still squeezing yes. time in there, but because I want to get up early and get stuff done before the family get up. I want to get stay up later after the family goes to sleep so I can get stuff done. Like, it's literally a lot of work that goes into a lot of stuff. And people don't understand how much it is. And it can take a toll. I know entrepreneurs, they they, they, they don't glorify as much as how much the back end work going into your mental and how much that takes on you. Absolutely. No, I totally agree with that because just before we got on, I just made breakfast for the fam. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, mm-hmm. um, this is my off days. You know, mm-hmm. yesterday, my off day, today's my off day. I had podcasts back to back. I edit. I got to do research. Mm-hmm. I'm still connecting with other people. I got to post. Right. And then I got to go to work overnight and still work. Right. And, and be 100% at that. And right. And that, and then come back four in the morning. Yesterday, I got four hours of sleep. I got to get on a podcast right away. Mm-hmm. To your point, you're right. Like, you know, it's tough, but you got to have some mental strength and if mm-hmm. you're easy to be broken. Then that means, yeah, you definitely need some assistance. You definitely right. have to look for it. You got to find it. And that may be yes. in a counselor or a therapist, there's many different forms of help you can get. Mm-hmm. Not having to go to you know, a psychologist where people mm-hmm. think they have to, but again, like you said, you, you educated yourself. You got to figure things out, mm-hmm. but the way of the internet, there's really no excuse of that. But at the same time, we still have to lead our people to it. We still, right. We still have to show them, hey, you know what? I got your hand. I'm not going to hold it forever. Right. Let me help you out. Let me show you. Right. Let's build together if we can. Right. If not, I'm going to be the biggest cheerleader for you and rah, 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 and support you. Nah, that's true. And I, and I think if you see my logo, I, because I, I had so much mental struggles when it came to helping people because I was trying to force them to help them. So right. now I'm only dealing with the people that either come to me and we talk or that I'm putting the medicine in the candy. Like I'll throw out a clip or something like that on social media or even when I post up stuff, it'll always be some type of interaction with the words of the music that I'm playing or something like that. You know, subliminally doing it, just like if y'all can subliminally say bad things, you can subliminally put good things as well. Absolutely. So I try to put the medicine in the candy and my logo going back to that is some me reaching down and trying to help people, but I'm not grabbing them. It's like, you got to put it forth for effort and I'll put forth the effort. I'm only putting right. forth the effort to the people that want to put forth the, the same amount. It's 50, 50, it's equal sacrifice. And if we, if we both are trying to get to a state of uh, being well, then it'll work out for the both of us. Cause I don't mind helping you and you don't mind getting help. No, absolutely. And to your point, like it has to be holistic. Mm-hmm. It has to be mind, body, and soul. You got to mm-hmm. find your spirituality, whatever that is. You, if you're not religious, that's fine too, but you still got to find your inner being. Right. You know and, and from there, you can definitely prosper more. Now, I, right. I, I see a lot of our folks, they complain about the jobs they have. Mm-hmm. And I tell folks, and I, I spoke to one of my friends actually recently, he was, he was bitching about his job mm-hmm. and how come they're not paying him more. Mm-hmm. I said, listen, when you interviewed, you accepted the offer. 
That's it, man. They, they didn't put a gun to your head. You could have negotiated for more, mm -hmm. or you could have said, no, I'm going to find something else. They're going to pay me. Yep. Yep. Right? But you took it. You're there for a year. Mm -hmm. You may have got a pass over for a promotion that you thought it was, you were ready for, but maybe you're actually not. Right. We all, we all tend to be in a high horse of ourselves, right? Right. I think we deserve so much more. Right. And if you and I were getting paid a million bucks to do what we do, we'll probably say, you know what? We need two million for it. Right, 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 <laughs> still right, right. Paid. right. Right. It's, it's never going to be enough. Enough, right. And that's where we have to really be realistic with ourselves and say, you know what? I need to work on myself some more. Right. I need a, I need a better or extensive more skill set to follow through on my dreams and to execute a higher level. Right. And we tend to just think we're so good at everything that we're actually good at nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I tell the kids that skills pay the bills. And yeah. if you, the more skills you get, the more um the more money you can make. I tell my girl all the time because she, she used to learn sign language. Um and she was taking the class up and I'm like, you should pick that up as a side hustle. Like you could really get paid big money yeah. just from being able to sign language and just doing that all day. For and real. just te even teaching that. But I don't think people realize the significance and the impact when it comes to having something like that, um, having a skill or a trait um, and being able. Because I used to be the big the guy that say, like, everybody should meet a job and start entrepreneurship and do this and do that. But then I realized some people, and I said to say, they have the ability to be entrepreneurs. Some but they have don't. the mentality to be, hold on, I ain't know they was going to cut grass. They have the ability to be entrepreneurs, but they have the mindset of a um an employee. Yeah, of a labor and worker. And I, I yeah, right. I tell people all the time, like I used to do the same things. Hey, go for ownership, go for this. That I realized, well, this person's not made for that. And, right. And having a career is not a bad thing either. It's not at you know all. Because you see CEOs, they making tons of dollars. Right. That's a, that's a career. They may not own the business, but they're a CEO of the business. And they right. make a hell of money. Right. So you're right about that. We have to really look at folks and say, you know what? If you do, an entrepreneur has been used a lot the past mm -hmm. few, almost to where it's being diluted. You know what I'm saying? And you look at anybody's IG, everybody's a freaking entrepreneur on IG and mm -hmm. you have no product. <laughs> so, so it's like, right. No, that's true. And right. I tell folks now, I was like, you know what? Don't worry about so much being like the next person, your cousin, your best friend, that they have a small business. If that's not you, that is fine. It's what fine. Is, it's 100% okay. Exactly. What is you? If that means you want to be a nurse and kill that field, mm -hmm. by all means, go get it. Go after it. Doctors make a whole lot of money. A lot of them don't own their own practice. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of lawyers who are in a firm, don't own a firm, not a partner. They make hella money. Again, to your point, it's all about the skill set. And if you can navigate through that, become a subject matter expert in it, you can kill it. You can right. Do it. You know what I'm saying? No, that's true. Now, go ahead, go ahead. Now, I was going to finish off with, as, as we continue to move on and educate our people on how that goes, and I think we can't forget about the older generation because they're in a, in a big transition. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a generation that may even need the most help because they were taught to be at a job for 30, 40 years and retire. Right. That doesn't exist anymore. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now they're in between the stage. Where do I work at? Where do I go? Right. What do I do yeah. now? Yeah, what I do now. And they're mentally stressed right now. Mm -hmm. I think that's the generation that needs probably the most help. As the younger generation don't know, we're not going to forget about them. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more access and resources for them. Right. Older generations, like, they don't know about the therapy. Right. They don't know how it can affect them in a positive way. How to give them that kind of reset. Make sense? Right. No, you're right. You're hitting the hell, nail on the head. <laughs> <laughs> Man. It comes down to, I think, a lot of times, man, just as we have these stories we have to give out, right? And we, we're able to put out these stories and then tell your own story as you do. Mm. It's the responsibility and you have to be accountable for that communication and connection that you make. Right. Because if you don't keep the accountability of that and take care of those stories and become a good steward of those stories, mm -hmm. then what are we doing this for? That's true. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's where your connection is coming from with the people who, who your audience, they feel you're a good steward of, mm -hmm. what, of, what you, of what you're talking about, of what you're presenting. Because if you wasn't, we wouldn't be talking. Right, <laughs> at all. Not at all. And 
I had to realize that I had to stop looking for the change that I wanted to see and started to become it. And I I was tired of like, why ain't nobody doing this? Or where the person that's supposed to do this? And there's no more Martin Luther Kings and there's no da 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 da. And I'm not trying to step in nobody's shoes because I, I I would never even put myself in that position to do that. But I also know that there is things that you individually can do to make a uh, leave an impact on the world. Um, I was speaking at a school the other day and I was talking about, I, I asked everybody, raise their hand. Um, do you feel like you have somebody you can go to and talk to about your issues or something that you don't feel sharing with everybody, but you have a person that you can go to? Only a few people can raise their hand. And I'm like, for everybody else, that means you should become one because you're looking for something and you're not even that, and you could be it for somebody else. So as much as you're looking, you should become it so that way people can come to you and you have people to come to. Now people are coming to you, y'all can have a conversation about it. And I felt like it was just a a, a space where it was no people. Mind you, I, again, grow, growing up in poverty and growing up in these, a certain type of community, have the same issues as everybody else. Even that that same little moment that I told you about where I was like, I I don't want to be here no more. I felt what it felt like for men to be deadbeat dads. And where I I had that opportunity right in that moment to run or stay. And because I didn't know what to do to stay, that's where the suicidal thoughts came in at. But because I understood why they run. It's like, I'd rather just go off and do my own thing. I didn't want to be a deadbeat, so I'm like, ah, oh, that pressure is just going to sit with me. But I say all that to say that people don't take the uh, responsibility to make the leave the world better than they found it. And I feel like it's everyone's duty. Like, we're a community. We, that's what makes a community it. I can't do what Johnny do. He can't do what I do. But we, we are operating our gifts. And what we do helps the world be better. And so I don't even know why I went there, but I really felt like I needed to be a, a, a communication vessel to try to leave the world better than I found it and make an impact to change the community the way I see it. You really make an impact, man. You're doing it already. You know what I'm saying? That that's you're only gonna present more and more and give more and more of yourself to the people. And and to your point, like by you doing such, you couldn't be where you're at now without fixing yourself first. Right. You, you couldn't do, you couldn't be all that without understanding your mental health struggle. And a lot of times people need to stand it. Sometimes you may not even need therapy. You're mm-hmm. just in a mental, you may, you're in a mental health environment that is not conducive to your well being. Mm-hmm. Right, right around family, around friends. Mm-hmm. They're not popping. They're not, they're not creative thinkers. They're not dreamers. They're, just, they're okay with it every day, every day. A lot of negative energy, and you're stuck in this rut because you're surrounded by that energy. Mm-hmm. It's your mental game. It is, it is fucking with you as far as your work ethic or, you know, trying to come up with some other shit. And I tell mm-hmm. people, you got to find people who are doing something you want to get, do what you're trying to do, but they're already two or three levels above you. So you can have that communication with them and say, you know what, Em, I want to work harder because these people are busting the ass. They're showing me how to grind. And right. Do what I can do it. And right. I tell people time, like, don't don't worry about comparing it like, who's smarter or whatever, because that whole thing is another competition game that they want us to play. Right. They want us to feel inferior with one another. You know what I'm saying? So if you're smarter than me, I'm I'm, I'm gonna lay back. No, it's not about being smarter than anything. We we're, we're doing something completely that's not out of the realm, but for the culture is like, yo, this is new. For the for the culture is like, man, like you know. They give an insight. They give a motivation, you know, and it comes down with a lot of discipline too, mental health. Like mm-hmm. you see your sister going to therapy since she was 15 to her 30s, that took discipline. Right. You know what I'm saying? First, the motivation came through to go get the help. Right. And it's like the discipline to keep that going throughout. That's mm-hmm. She knows what she needs to operate with. Right. You know what I'm saying? She's found her diet. Right. You know what I'm saying? You preaching and, the word. And that diet is, is mental health as well. It's mm-hmm. part of it. And that's what people got to understand. Man. Like, you know, it's, you want to work out, have a great body and all that's fantastic, but then you're still fucked up in the head. Right. The mind ain't right. The body will float, man. You got, the mind has to be the number one priority for anything. Like, you, the, it, it has to be just, like I said, it has to be just as high on the to-do list than everything else. Like, I make sure I got my, my power hour where I do my meditation, my journaling, and my reading. That's 20 minutes each. 
And I have to get that done because reading helps me fill up. Um, meditating helps me reflect. And journaling helps me pour out. And if you don't have all of that stuff to help exercise your mind, like you, you'll be doomed. Like, and I, and I understand how people get to their sixties or seventies and they looking at like, what happened? Like, yeah. where, did, where, where did my life go in these 60, 70 years? And it's because you never took time to prioritize your mental health. Yeah, you're right. Like last year I wrote two books and one was about mental health. It was called inside out. Mm-hmm. And it was like more of an, of an essay. And it was mm-hmm. like, you know, like, you have to get your mind right. Your mindset right. has to be on point before you mm-hmm. want to do anything in this world. No, that's mm-hmm. true. And if you're struggling just to get up to go to work every day, that there's a major fucking issue. No. Nah. And you have to Ooh. recognize that issue. And Ooh. you have to attack it. You know what I'm saying? And you, when you attack it and get the proper help that you need, then there's no, there's no ceiling. You, you, there's right. limitless of what, exactly what you can fucking do. Right. But... You have to look at these these signs that, that you are given mm-hmm. and saying, hey, man, if I'm willing to call out work every single day, it's more than just a job. Right, right. <laughs> it, it's more than just a pay. Because you can switch nah, it to the same. I know mad people who change jobs and still felt the same exact fucking way. All same the, way. The boss is against me. I don't get along with these people. <laughs> this chick is always, you know, looking at me sideways. And I'm like, well, maybe it's you. Right. Maybe you're the fucking problem. Right. You give off this fucking vibe that no one can fuck with. Like, right. I said they look at you sideways because you have this freaking face on you that look in your eye like you're just not there. Bad energy. Exactly. And I, mm-hmm. I think that's where, too, that people have to understand that, like, you know what? To be religious and, and have religion and go to church is great. Do what you need to do. But understand about the energy as well understand how to produce that in a different way and prayer can help it out as well as a form of meditation mm-hmm. too but i think people don't know how to pray either though you know what i'm saying people don't know how to use it correctly in a way for the mental mm-hmm. health. you know what i'm saying you can pray to 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 try to get something which makes no sense to me you can pray to if there's a prayer chain happening because someone's sick or ill that energy i believe that does work you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. That's, I'm trying to amount of people giving out this energy. I think that's huge. But mm-hmm. what do you do for yourself with the time that you take out? You know, what does your prayer, you know, curriculum look like for you? You know, mm-hmm. and I think that's what the churches don't read to teach. You know what right. I'm saying? You're reading off the book and it's great. But what about right. the now and how to use that information for yourself to prosper? Everybody's mm-hmm. looking good on Sunday, but everyone still leaves it. There's the church all fucked up still. Right. You make sense? Or am I just out of no, the room right now? No, you preaching a word right now. You you preaching <laughs> you you saying something right now. I hope they listening and picking up all these jewels you dropping. It's just you know, it's just facts, but if you really study people and you look at how we always we are as social creatures. That's why there's churches, that's why there's gangs, that's why right. you have political parties. We want to be part of something. Something, yep. You know what I'm saying? And because, and even the people say, oh, no, I'm a loner. I want to be alone. You know, hence my name. Right. (laughs) I thought I was a big, I I wanted to be the biggest loner. But I had to realize I couldn't survive that way. I couldn't live my life. I wanted to live just being some fucking gypsy loner. Right. Right. I got to, I got to invite the right people around me. And the reason why I thought that way I did before was because I had the wrong people around. me. So I was, I was just trying to get away from my situation. Right. There's no one else that understands, understands gonna be with me. Let me just bounce and be, be solo for the rest of my, my, my life. That right. was that wasn't the right move or the right thought process. Right. But I knew I had to get out. That was yeah, the only yeah, thing I knew that. Different. Yeah, I knew I needed to get out from around the circle I had. Right. You know what I'm saying? And some people have that, but then some people just don't and they're just stuck. And when they mm-hmm. finally get introduced to someone like yourself. You're gonna, you know, you're presenting life changing skill sets to people with your knowledge and, and, what, and what, you're, what you're talking about, what you're pushing is huge, man. It's huge for someone's life to get changed. Mm-hmm. I hope you I hope you know that, you know what I'm saying? Because you got it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, that's that's the main reason, and I, again, I don't promote anything, but that's the main reason why I did my book and where I got the, 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 the subtitle from. It's literally called suffering into success, a paradigm shift. So you shifting your thinking 
a struggle to achieve happiness. Because like you said, we come from certain environments where we ha- we hang out with certain people and we wonder why we're not getting nowhere, where we're not doing nothing, that, or doing anything productive. And we just looking at people on TV and stuff like that. What have you done to even get to that part? What hard work have you made? And I wanted people to start shifting the hard work is, as opposed to looking at it as something that um, it's like, oh, I got to go to work. How about you get to go to work to use the money to do stuff to get you out of something? Like people look at hard work so such in a negative connotation as opposed to a caterpillar. They love the fact that they get to go in a cocoon after they come out of it. Or a, a piece of rock that turns into a diamond, it starts off as a black piece of coal that got to get some heat, pressure, and all of that stuff to get become a diamond. I'll take that process 10 times full over if I have to, just so that way I can get to that part. I think what our people, bro, the biggest thing that they're afraid of is is the goal, to success, right? Mm-hmm. They know they can make a vision board. You see these vision board parties happening, and that's mm-hmm. fantastic. But the problem is that they don't talk about the next steps. The work. The work that it takes mm-hmm. to get to the goal, to get to the mm-hmm. summit. Mm-hmm. As our rock climber's climbing, he or she is slipping. You know, you got mm-hmm. to make sure they, they put those carabiners in right. If not, they're going to fall off the damn cliff. Mm-hmm. You know, they may make a, a, a great stride and climb perfectly. And then what do I do next? I have to pause and figure out another path. And people tend to get turned away from that. Right. They say, man, I didn't think it was going to be this. Or, man, I don't have the knowledge to go forward. What well, you do, because every, every, every roadblock that comes up is going to force you to think a different way. It's going to force you to use your critical thinking skills. Mm-hmm. It's going to force you to open up and say, damn, okay. What did, how, how do I maneuver? How do I get over this? Right. My mother was great at surviving, and she told me how to survive in the streets, but she never told right. me how to live because she didn't know how to live. Right. I had to teach myself that. I had to move out to projects and move my kids to the cul-de-sac. Right. I had my kids going back to the hood. Right. Left that for a reason. Right. That's why I tell folks my journey was I had fear. I never let the fear pause me or stop mm. me. I used the fear to to motivate me, to perpetuate me forward. And I said, you know what? Fuck it. If I'm going to go all in on anything, I'm going to go all in on me. Ooh. I'm going to, I'm going to take all, all, my, all, my, all, my, all my monies and whatever I have, knowledge, everything. And I said, you know what? I'm all in on me. This is mm-hmm. Vegas and it's me. Yep. And here we go. I'm going to take the chance. Because no one else is going to take a risk like that on me. Right. No, no bank is. No company is mm-hmm. the person going to see how much value I have compared to myself. So once you have that high sense of value, once you have an understanding of that, you are great at what you are mm-hmm. and who you are, then yeah, take the risk. Cause with the risk, there's going to be a, a great fucking reward, right. but it's going to take time mm-hmm. and work and work because at the end of the day, we, we can destroy any building out there, anything we built in, in seconds and minutes. Mm-hmm. It takes time to build a skyscraper. It takes time to build a house. Months. Mm-hmm. You got to wire it. You got to put plumbing in it. You got to put drywall. You got to get the foundation poured first. Then you got to get the, the wood to make the frame. Then right. you put, somebody put the, put the windows in, the roof, right? Put the floors in. It takes so much to build. Right. But when it's done, guess what? You're moving in. That's true. And that's how you guys look at your path in your life. When are you going to move in to your life? Woo. You know what I'm saying? You preaching a word. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's what, but that's how we got to get to our people, bro. We got we to gotta talk to them in ways that's going to make them, mo- motivate them to get, to get forward, get their mental state on point. But make them understand too, motivation is fickle, it's temporary. It's an adrenaline shot. Mm-hmm. Discipline of the journey has to come in. When you get up every day, knowing that even though you don't want to do it, you force yourself to do it anyway. That's mm-hmm. when you have fucking discipline. That's when you know that the greater picture is there. I just got to keep on grinding and grinding and grinding. That's why I don't like the term motivational speaker or motivate. I, cause yeah. I, it, motivation doesn't last. Discipline, that, that, that has no feeling. Motivation has a lot of feeling and discipline has no feeling whatsoever. If you have feeling good, but you go to work when you don't, even if you don't feel like it, you start doing stuff even when it's not. Like you just I, like I have a skeleton of a good day where I gotta make sure I have to do boom 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 so right. that way I can get this done and have a good day. And 
people have motivation because the day I don't feel like doing a lot of stuff every day. Yeah, I don't. I do not feel like doing ninety percent of the stuff that I do. But because I know the discipline is going to get me rewards at the end of it, I don't need to be motivated when you got discipline. Exactly. Absolutely. And then to try to get motivation for someone else, mm-hmm. they find that from within. Mm-hmm. Cause that person's not gonna always gonna be there. You're right. I, I love Gary V of the world. I love the Tony Robbins. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? All these motivational folks. I followed them for years. Mm-hmm. Read a lot of books. Mm-hmm. But that still wasn't me. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I I still had to do the work of getting up. Right. And motivating myself. Mm-hmm. You know, you can pop in a tape or whatever or listen to another podcast too. But you still got to fucking do the work. That's it. <laughs> you still gotta get up and say, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this today." You know, that's why I hate like New Year's pops up. Cause New Year's pops up, everybody's going to the gym. Everyone's buying a gym membership, and by end of February, that shit is dead. Mm-hmm. But the people who are in there already that had the discipline to go all throughout the year, mm-hmm. they get pissed. They don't want those new people in there. Cause they're gonna take up the machines. You know, see people trying to break their necks, trying to work out. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Mm-hmm. Right? And so that's slowing up the people who do have the discipline. Like, I, mean, I can't wait till this two months are over. These people are done with their motivational shit. But that's what happens on an everyday basis. When someone thinks of something, they have this plan or idea or this dream. They don't know, they don't know how to make it real. Because they have these mental roadblocks. Mm-hmm. They have that negative energy around them. Mm-hmm. You gotta take care of you first before you come up with anything. Write down the idea, write down your dream. You may have the next Uber or Coca Cola in your mm-hmm. po- back pocket, but it's not gonna go nowhere if you can't get your mental straight. No, that, and that's true. And, I, and one thing that you said that that I've been thinking about too a lot about, um, and I forgot where I read it or listened to it. So it's not me that came up with this, but they say the Entrepreneur New Year starts next month. It's when all the 2020 cars come out. Like, they come out. Yeah. It's already next month. So, by the time January comes, we're already six months into our goals for the yep. for 2020. So, exactly. my New Year is coming up already. While yeah, everybody you're does. absolutely right, bro. <laughs> That's how I'm living. That's, and I tell people, listen, every day is a new year. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, it's about what you want to do. With, and I'm going to tell people out there right now, listen, don't worry about the past. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about how much, how late you are in the game. Mm-hmm. You started. Don't compare yourself. Just fucking get started. That's it. Just get going. Don't compare yourself to no one else. Don't look at nobody who may have started 10 years earlier. Don't say I would have, could have, should have, but you're doing it now. That's mm-hmm. all that matters. That's all that fucking counts. We tend to get caught up on that shit a lot. Mm-hmm. And we tend to deter ourselves saying, oh, how can I do that now at 40? How can I do that at 50? Listen, we're, we're living longer than any other generation ever. Right. You have a lot more time. Make it happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we saying? will live a lot longer with the internet and podcasts. You're going to live centuries now because of, you, of what you're doing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that would be insane, right? We could we live to 150, 200 easily. Right. So what are you going to do with that long-ass life? How are you going to be in a right. prosper? You know, that, that's what people have to really get through their heads. Again, if it's a career move, by all means, go after it. Become a subject matter expert. Be the best at it. Be an authority of that mm-hmm. subject. So you can command all the monies that you want. Right. right? If you really want to be a true entrepreneur, get ready for long as days, a hard freaking life, because mm-hmm. it's no fucking joke. At all. <laughs> they say entrepreneurs are the only people that quit a 40 year, a 40 hour week to do like an 80, 120 hour week. Yeah. <laughs> There's no clocking out. There's no nine to five. Right. You, you know, you have to pay for your own insurance. <laughs> like, right. Is, you know, that's what people don't understand. Like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Okay, are you ready for that? Because after five o'clock, guess what? It doesn't stop. Right. You don't get to just drive home from the office and then go see the family. Like, you may not see the family for a little while. Right. You're working a 16, 18 hour day. Right. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that true grind? That's true. You know, and I, I tell folks, like, look at the small businesses. Look at the little pizzeria. Look at the little bakery or whatever. Some people are er- they're early in the morning baking. Mm-hmm. 
You smell it when you go and you get up in the morning and to go to rush hour through traffic and you, the, the the bakery's baking the muffins and the bread. And you're like, damn, it's five in the morning. <laughs> and they're ready to bake it. But they already up and at them. They know they know what the early bird gets the worm. And and that takes discipline. They went through their right. mental stage. They figured out what they needed to do to fortify the the mindset that they needed. And they went ahead and said, oh, this is my discipline. Mm-hmm. And not every company, not every entrepreneur needs to be a conglomerate that, of a company. Right. A successful small business that's killing it locally, local market. And who, who's to say that everyone can handle that, that, that type of responsibility? You know what it takes to be fake? Shoot, Mark Zuckerberg just got uh, fined for like a billion dollars or something. Yeah. Privacy issues or something like that. I don't I, want those type of problems. No, neither do I, bro. Yes, if I can <laughs> open up 10 small businesses in 10 different states, why not? Right. It's, it's still kill it and live a fantastic freaking life. Right. Yeah. I think that's, 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 that's one, one, that's what I want. I want to be able to live a life where I can travel and explore, have a blast at learning, mm-hmm. have a blast at meeting people like yourself, right? Right. And just enjoying my time here with the fam. So right. I want to take vacation. Yeah, I'm taking a week, two weeks, a month off. But my shit's lined up. Right. My, sh- my shit's all good to go on the back end. Right. So I have my schedule. I'm going to block it out so no one can schedule. Like you right. see, now when I booked you for this, I said to go on my calendar, find out, see what days are available. Right. I made sure the days that were blocked, that's time for me. That's time for the fan. Right. That's time for me to go to work. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. But if I was lying to myself, say, I'll pick any day. Then I'll be lying to myself. I'll be trying to make some shit happen. It'll be half-assed conversations. Right. So you got to be true to yourself. You got to be honest with yourself, which we're not honest with ourselves much at all either. And it goes back to the mental because we haven't unpacked a lot of that stuff. And how can you be honest when you don't know who you are? Yeah. You can't be honest with yourself if you if you really are honest and you talk. Would they have the strength to talk about the story that you just talked about regarding yourself? Like, I don't think certain people are ready to unpack all of that stuff, which is fine. But just know you can't truly fully heal and be your best version of yourself until you deal with some of that stuff with, that's going on inside of you, until you unpack all of those emotions. You can't go after pity and sympathy. That's, that's not the right energy that you want. Because mm-hmm. you, you, you could probably get it. You probably will get that. Mm-hmm. That's not the energy that you want. You don't want people right. feeling sorry for you. Right. You want to tell people if anything, hey, don't feel sorry for me. I'm actually good. Right. I wish it didn't happen to me, no doubt. But because it has, right. I've taken control of it. And this is right. where I'm at today of it. Right. You know? Right. Now, and I don't think people are willing to put that again when they go back to work. It's, are you willing to even put the type of work that will get you to your best? So because who wants to go under that heat and pressure? It, it, or, you know, that like, it's, I'm sure it's stuff that you had to go through to create your podcast. Everybody just want to get on the mic and talk. And it's like, well, that's not even the half of it. Getting on the it's mic and not. talking is probably like 10% of the work that you do. Listen, it took me since 2017. End of 2017, I thought about doing a podcast. I had a podcast with my cousin. We were both doing it remotely. That didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Right. This timing, you know, she's working. She's in New York. I'm in Atlanta. Just didn't yeah. work out. Then I said, well, I'm doing myself. Started talking to myself. But, you know, I'm listening to other podcasts. So I was kind of mimicking what I was listening to. Right. But it wasn't my voice. So. Right. And I didn't have no guests. It was just me talking. And then after a while, I kind of figured out what I wanted to do. And I changed the name of the podcast. And then I was like, well, what do I, what, why don't I just go after what I like? Right. And I was like, so I like to talk to folks. I like to learn. My biggest thing. I like to learn from people, from all cultures, all backgrounds. But my goal was like, you know what? Let's make a platform for brown and black people, though. Right. I'm not exempting white folks who want to come on here, which I have white folks on here before. But I'm really looking for brown and black people who need that platform that they're not going to have the access to. Right. And I love hip hop. So I was like, well, the connection with me, being from New York and hip hop, I said, I'm going to give underground artists a platform. And then he evolved. And I was like, well, I'm still going to do the education thing too. I can do both. Right. Can, this is the podcast. I'm going to speak to multiple people, getting different point of views, different backgrounds, educations, and, and things that people are just doing. Right. And 
I had to get my first guest. I was like, how the hell am I going to get a guest? <laughs> and I just started DMing folks. I was, I was already following. I was ready to look at it. And I, and I got my first guest. And they were like, yeah, I'll do it. It was a local person. There was still no video yet. And it was in the back of a Pet Boys with my iPhone. Mm-hmm. That, was my, that was my first guest I've had my podcast. Wow. And I just used my eyes. I put it right on the table. It was an hour long. It was a great. It was this other cat that I met. He was a manager of Pet Boys, a, a black, older black man that mm-hmm. was in love with boxing. He boxed. He got knocked out once. It stopped him from boxing. And he always wanted to coach the rest of his life, but he didn't because he, he just never got that out of him, that loss. Mm-hmm. And now he's starting to coach again. And he has a couple of boxers he's coaching now. So it was, a, it was a great kind of, you know, full circle story. Right. And I was like, man, now I got to try to get video. That's my next move. And <laughs> video didn't come to honestly to five, six months later. Wow. That, I just figured that out equipment wise. What does that look like? What software do I use? Right. And I, got, I told people like you have figured things out by researching, asking questions. I just asked people who, who had video podcasts. I DM'd them. Uh, how do you do your podcast? What mic are you using? What software are you using? What computer are you using? Like, some answered, and some didn't. Right. I didn't get salty for the ones that didn't answer. I just right. moved forward to the ones who did. Right. And then I said, okay, great. Now I had my kind of my my voice, and I figured out how I'm gonna be. And I was like, yeah, being me is the best thing. It's the most genuine thing I can offer. Right. Genuine curiosity of people, my love of hip hop. And then that's it. My next yeah, phase is do more so. in-persons, you know what I'm saying? Right. And just chill with folks and just have a fucking conversation with each other. Right. That's, that, that's the main shit. And just chop it up with good, good people like yourself. Nah, and it's, it's a phenomenal thing. I was, doing, I was looking at some of the clips you put out and going through some of the information. I love what you're already doing. And that sounds like a phenomenal episode to listen to. So guys, go check that out. I'm going to go check it out with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, you know, really listen to it. But that's some, some, some of the similar reasons why I did my podcast as well. I, was, I, I wanted to combine my love for learning just like yourself and just like understanding the human brain and mentality because what most people don't know, and I'm, I'll say it to you, this is the first time I'm saying that like on like a platform, is that I'm going deeper past like the surface level of mental health. Yeah, we got poverty. Yeah, we have depression and stuff like that. But I want to understand how the brain works and right. what causes depression and understanding the, you know, the the double amount of the I don't even know that word, but the brain, <laughs> the different membranes, all that stuff that's inside your brain. Like, I literally want to go in and study it and really dissect it and pull it apart. You know, what causes headaches? Headaches come from different parts of the brain. Like, just my love of learning as well as still having that niche of conversation, like you said, with hip hop, minds of mental health. Like I literally want to still have these same conversations, but even going deeper on a deeper level and just understanding human brains and, you know, figuring out where do we go from the future? History teaches you and the fu- it can tell you what the future is going to present. So I just try to do exactly what you do is combine my love and conversations and having that authority of trying to understand um, people and what they want to do is is the same reason why I'm having these podcast conversations as well. Yeah, that's 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 huge. Like you actually knew that you know what, my growth is not done. Mm-hmm. I have to I have to expand even more. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure in the beginning you didn't think where you're at now. It took you to learn what you learned mm-hmm. to open up your eyes to say what there's more to learn. Oh, right. Man. Right. I, I got to go at it. And then right. the challenge to yourself of saying, I want to learn about the damn brain. I want right. to learn how this shit ticks inside and out mm-hmm. to see how the environment of our people is affecting our being raised in development. Because mm-hmm. it starts from young. You know right. But and you, by you doing that shit, bro, let's, let's give a clap out for Reggie. Reggie's <laughs> fucking killing it. I, got, I can't fuck around. I got to get Reggie a fucking round. <laughs> That's just. That's just phenomenal. That's just phenomenal to fucking hear. Like, I appreciate you. That's the inspiring part that, that brown and black folks needs to hear. Mm-hmm. That the education didn't stop. It never does. No. That you have to continue expanding yourself. And then at the same time, you can do more than one thing. There's no issue with that. But you want to continue growing 
because if you read a lot, as I know you do, as I do, these millionaires have seven, eight different revenue, you know, revenue streams. Come right. That's how they become rich, not just by one. Right. And for you, the same thing, your podcast is one, your book is another, speaking gigs is another. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But for you, the, the whole thing that drives you, and that's another word we need to talk about is drive, is your 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 love for what you're doing. Mm-hmm. That that's you know the main that thing. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. I found it. Mm-hmm. This is my niche. And I'm going to fucking kill it. But I know I need some more education behind me to drive yep. more. And I, and I want to go through the things, um, even with coaching, having coaching and helping people with mental clarity. I'm like, I'm not a therapist, but I, it's some stuff, even having these type of conversations, that's therapeutic enough. And I try to help people have those same conversations. So that, that's as well as another web stream, but everything that I do leads from the fact that I love what I do. Like I can, again, like what we talked about earlier, I can do this all day. I can speak all day to kids and have them conversations. I can coach all day. I can like just everything. I can, I have 30, 40 books that I, you just said you wrote two last year. I need to get on, uh, get the foot on the gas. <laughs> I'm on still shopping the ones that I got, but as, as yourself, when you have a love for what you do, I'm, you, you start to find different mediums and ways to do what you do on different levels to resonate with different audiences. Even still, like just because the fall is coming up, I'm about to start blogging again and putting out blogs to start writing yeah. and getting the juices running for that. But there's certain people that want to read certain things. Um, but, you know, just trying to find different avenues to scratch that itch of like not only wanting to learn and wanting to know and wanting to understand, but just still making an impact and helping people get to wherever they're trying to get to as well. No, absolutely. I think you're absolutely right. I think for me, what I've learned this year so far has not even over yet. I've already decided by the end of the year, of the new year, 2020, I'm going to write a book about this past year of all my guests that I, I, I learned from. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Kind of doing a recap of the knowledge I was bestowed upon that right. made me grow, you know, even ten, ten, tenfold. Because right. of the people like yourself talking to you and, and, and making challenging me to, well, I got to read up on this shit. Reggie's talking about this. But I don't know nothing about this shit. Oh, right, right. You know, so it forces you by you engaging with people all the time, mm. it forces you to learn about something. It forces you to think outside the box, to be more open, to be more understanding. When you close right. yourself off, then you're closed off. The, the light is not coming in. That room becomes very dark. And that's a mm-hmm. dark place to get into as well. Men- and everything we're talking about continues to come, come back to your mental state, to your mindset. Right. You know, right. And, and the more light you let in, the more stronger you become. Ooh. Plain and simple, you know what I'm saying? And as we continue to, to run through that and to continue to take that and own it, then our duty, Reggie, is to pass that on to folks. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Our duty is to make sure that these folks are getting exactly what we're receiving and mm-hmm. sharing that light with them. Because right. if we don't, then we're just being greedy. We're deciding not to do shit with it. We're just trying to keep it for ourselves, which a lot of our people have done. They went out the neighborhoods and never really came back to help. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, that, and that's where we need to change that up and say, you know what? I mean, I live in a neighborhood and I probably won't either. Be straight up, as a whole point. Right. <laughs> but this is where I've learned. Let me show you how to get out. You know what I'm saying? So here's so the let, rope. Let me ask you a question. Since you you hip hop in in that same story, how do you feel about the Nipsey Hustle situation? I think it was sad. I think he was really trying to do things in a good way, where he was trying to gentrify his own community by having mm-hmm. a black business in there. Right, it was a great thing. The problem I have with it is that, unfortunately, when you hit a certain status of fame in the neighborhood that you're in, it makes it difficult for people like that to go back and think that they're safe. Right. He had a false sense that he was safe. Mm. And unfortunately, if you go back to the hood and you're driving a fancy car, right, and you're still claiming to be that person you was from when you lived there, you have to be really honest with yourself saying you're not the same person anymore. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I love the fact what he was doing. I love the whole marathon thing. Supported mm-hmm. a thousand percent. 
I think he was really a genius, a young genius that, he, that was just about to really bubble and pop in a good way. Mm-hmm. And um, I think a, a lot of that, again, bodyguards, you know, and again, he wanted to be close to the people, so I get it. But I think it could have probably gone differently where he wasn't so accessible. That he could have probably did it in different mediums, maybe concerts for the neighborhood where he's there with other other folks to, to drive it. Um, but at the same time, like that's just me. That's my now, take. I, I agree with you um, to an extent because the, the who gives us the biggest motivation right now in Philly is Meek Mill and what he's doing. Yeah. And if we felt like Meek wasn't accessible, then we we wouldn't f- have that hope. When I can see him driving, he riding the dirt bike. He hasn't been riding it because of the court situation, but right. him riding through with the dirt bikes or him just rolling through the city, it gives you motivation. I just don't know. Because that Nipsey that affected me hard because I'm not doing the same work, but I'm similarly trying to affect change within my community. But I know, like you said with yourself, it's hard to find that balance of still being, being able to touch the people, but knowing enough to be in a status where it's like, I can't, Jay-Z's not in these hoods. Like, he, he, no. he's still affecting a lot, yeah. but not in these hoods on a day-to-day. But I can't say that it, it's it's hard because I think once you get to a certain status, you, you can have more change. And the only image that keeps coming to my mind is a general can fight in the war, like in the trenches, but once he, he gets up, he he's in the tent. way more but better for it. Yeah, like... He see this is what we have to look at. The general was in the tent, having a mm-hmm. thirty thousand foot view. Right, His attendants are out there with the team, right. talking back, saying, "Hey, this was popping out here, and you know the streets right. more." And I think that's where, honestly, you have to be. Even when Martin Luther King was at the peak of who he was, mm-hmm. FBI was trying to get him. Get him. Yep. He knew it. You know right. what I'm saying? And people were trying to protect him, but even then, like you know, he's at a hotel in Tennessee, and what happens? Mm-hmm. He's assassinated. Right. It's a tough decision. It's not right. an easy one. It takes the right person to do that. And Nipsey was very strong in his mindset, saying, nah, this is who I am. These are my folks. But again, you have envious people. You have that evil side, that bad energy that we talked about. Mm-hmm. And you have to protect yourself as much as possible that you can from that so you can continue your mission. Right. No one's going to be able to do the same mission as, as Nipsey was. Right. He, that was his vision. That was his baby. He was bringing some hope back into the hood before right. it gets gentrified to a whole different race. Right. You no, know, we own it. Let's, let me show you how to own stuff. Right. But now it's to your point. I grew up a block away from Jay Z. He did Marcy Project. I live in Tompkins Projects in Bed mm. So growing up in those areas of Project Wars is no joke. Do I want to save people from it? Absolutely. But people also have to learn how to save themselves. Yeah. yeah. And the it's mindset. Mindset, it's a whole lot of something, right? So can we go back and give our turkeys every fucking Thanksgiving? Sure. What does that really do? I don't need right. a person one fucking day. Right. We had to, to teach our people how to fucking fish so they can start that's feeding true. You know what I'm saying? Or that, show them. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Because you can't go physically and teach them, but you could show them like how to do it virtually. or like Exactly. You show them. Exactly. And people who have their phones, no matter where you go, Right, your cell phone's your your main device. So if we can connect like the way we could connect it now, and let right. people know yeah, this is real talk, this is real shit. But yeah, am I gonna let someone know where I live at? No, I'm gonna have a PO box. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just simple knowledge, though. Like you have to be there, but you also gotta protect your own. You gotta think about your family. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's the biggest thing because you still want to live some type of a normal life. Right. Right. So. Well, I'd rather be a good influence with no fame. You know what I'm saying? So the jealousy isn't there. Once once you have fame, it puts you on this on this on this platform. Mm-hmm. Begin to hate. Mm-hmm. You know, you have your trolls that come up, people who love you as well. But if I'm not famous, I'm okay with that. Right. If I can still make it the best impact I can out mm-hmm. there, I'm okay. So I can walk the streets and really be in a group or at a church helping somebody out and saying, right. Hey, this is who I am. He helps out folks, but yeah, I'm not going to drive my Bentley down there. I'm not stupid. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You do have to still assimilate, you know, want to let people right. know that I live a simple life, but yeah, I got this, I got my toys at home. Right. I also know that I could be also a, a freaking target. Right. 
you want, again, it, it, you have to be, uh, you have to be really real about the people you're working with and the people that's around that may not want to fuck with you. And those right. are the trolls. Those are the haters. Those are the motherfuckers that want to get you. Right. And the more you display what you got, you know, people, people get jealous. You're in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't have. Right. And they want what you have and they'll take it at any means necessary. Rappers yeah. get robbed all the time. Right. That's, Why? That's so true. They, they want to go back to the hood. They think they got it locked down like that, but no, but you're not the man of the hood. You're just, mm. you're just some artists. You know, so you're not the one really running the streets. Right. That, that drug dealer two blocks away is running shit. And you can't put in no work if you're on, the, on tour and all. You can't do nah. nothing. So you lose that relate. I, and that was actually one of the uh, early lessons that I learned too for myself was when I was going through my mental transformation, I would go back and try to still prove myself. Like, no, I'm still with the people. Like, I'm still relatable. Like, I'm still in here. And I realized that another friend got took one summer over a dice game. Another friend got locked up in and out of jail. And I was like, why am I proving myself to these people that that they don't care if I die or, or, or whatever the case may be happened to me? So I had to be comfortable with the fact of I know who I was. I can accept who I, I, I am. And I have to prove anything because you know that's that's a almost like a childish mentality of like still trying to prove yourself to you. You're your still kids. trying to hang on. You still try yeah. to you still try to keep your stripes. You know what I'm saying? You're still like, no, way, I don't want to give these stripes away yet, bro. Right. I gave mine up. It was hard. I, it, I looked at my kids and I'm like, <laughs> those are the only stripes that I need right now. If I'm yeah. cool to them and my cool to my lady, I don't need no more stripes for nobody. Like I don't need nobody else to validate me. Like when it comes to especially proving my manhood. Like, I don't need nothing, no no other man to validate if I'm a man or not. Like, that's Absolutely. crazy to me. You have to be secure <laughs> of who you are. Absolutely. You have to be solely secure of who you are and understand that you're still helping people from the hood that want to be helped. Right. right? Those are the people who are going to follow you, who are going to take your word, your advice, and then they're going to start making changes to get themselves out of it. Mm-hmm. Right. The people who decide to stay in the hood, that's also a choice as well. No one's keeping right. no one there. Right. No one's telling them they can't prosper. You know what I'm saying? Times are different. Now, don't get me wrong. Are there still challenges? Absolutely. Let's not be ignorant to that. Right. But times are a lot better than before. Right. And to come up has become a lot easier because of the internet, because of what we're doing. Right. Having real conversations like this. You know what I'm saying? No, and, that's true. And if, we have, and if we're not realistic with that, then fine. Like I said, like we said before, the people of the audience are going to follow you. They're going to follow you. Mm-hmm. And if they're in the hood, they follow you. That's fantastic. If they're in the hood, they don't. Okay, you can't touch everybody. Right. <laughs> maybe that's it's true. Maybe you're not the one to touch you. Maybe it's somebody else. Right, 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 right. And that's fine too. But the chicks who just want to twerk, let them twerk. You know what I'm saying? The dudes who want to show out with 17 gold chains on and, and ball out and, and, and sell dope, you can do that too. That, that is your option. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I tell people I make, I make, motivation for the sidewalk and you know how people make music for the streets and they yep. do that i love that Listen, i got the people that like myself like i dabbled in the street i played it a couple times in the streets but i always came back in the house where <laughs> some people that they played the block and they did all that stuff all night long so what my motivation come for the people like myself like you know your friends is in the hood your friends they in the streets they doing stuff they out there scamming whatever the case they doing murder everything um, but that don't mean that has to be you. And I wasn't out there selling drugs, but my, some of my closest friends was. And that don't mean I had to do it. And they never looked at me bad because I was doing it. But I didn't understand what it, what a brick cost and all that stuff. Yeah. I don't know those those terms because I wasn't in the street. So we, I'm we glorify that, that language too, though. Huh? We glorify that whole situation with the right, language. Right, right, To make it seem super cool because we don't know about it. Oh, oh you motherfucking square. What the fuck you don't know about this shit? Like, right, know. right. Now it, it, we 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 forget about the individuals because the girls like the street guys too. So we get we forget about there are women out there that don't all the way like the street guy. They like just like you. They like to look at it. They like to play with it a little bit, but then they like to come back in the house. So I make motivation for the sidewalks where them people who they just know of it. They know they're aware of it, but they never they never all the way in the street. <laughs> like they just those like are the cats themselves. back home like. They're on the stoop. Those are the stoop cats. Right. Those are the cats right. on the stoop all day, just passing on mad knowledge. Mm-hmm. But some shit go down, they're peeping like, I'm going back in the crib right now. <laughs> right, right, right. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
Mm-hmm. And again, maybe our culture has glorified so much um, in the wrong light. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We we made the gangster shit cool, right? And it's not. You know, you think gangster shit is cool, man? You can lose your fucking life real quick. Mm-hmm. You know, he's gonna force you to make some some decisions that are gonna ruin your life or someone else's. You know, and mm-hmm. and, and that's not the good thing. Right. Would that ever go away? No, it's never gonna go away. Right, not because it's still. Um, I ain't gonna lie to you. The music still sounds hard when you hear it. <laughs> it sounds hard, bro. I still, I still bump it. So it's like, yo, I'm not gonna be here. I'm not, I'm not gonna try to front. I still bump right. it. I love it. It pushed me back. But like, I think Jay Z said one of his old albums. He was like, if you want the old Jay Z, listen to my old albums. Right. Because you're not gonna, you can't get that same artist. You can't. You've grown. If you when you when you grow, right. You can't go back to that. Right. It's hard to stretch. It's hard, it's hard for a rubber band to go back once it's stretched. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely i love that you know it's it, you're absolutely right and it's tough and you why would you want to go back why would you want right. to go back to that mindset right you know what i'm saying because that was your that was when you were stagnated mm-hmm. your growth was not happening right man you know this conversation be real real tough bro. i love it man <laughs> I'm happy to provide value, man. That's all I try to do is make sure I provide value, especially when you said it was a, it was going to be a long one. I'm like, all right, I got to make sure I... Oh, yeah, I don't care how long this value. is. Yeah, you have to come in, because listen, man, I don't stop knowing. If the conversation goes well, I keep it going. And I, right. and I and I post a whole damn thing. I don't... Right. Not a damn thing. I was like, right. here we go. We're going to post it. This is raw footage. I'm actually going to do a podcast at the event as well. Okay. So we, we're going to do that live at the event. Okay. Sit down together, you know. I like that. Um, uh, I definitely support your your uh, your session too. So I'm in the in the back supporting your session, man. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely, Listen, bro. I, I'm trying to show love to them too because I want to make sure it's an impactful one, um, and make sure people get real value. So I've been trying to like get a lot of people to come out to the what is it Love Me Now conference? I forgot. Yep, it's a uh, a uh, uh, love it's it's loving me 2019. All right, loving right. me 2019. 19. Mm-hmm. Right, Reggie. Matter of fact, give people your your code, man. Um, if you guys want to come out, it's in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I'm definitely going to be there, and um, my offer code is. You will definitely get your money's worth, and and you can see just off of this conversation, we are committed to making sure you guys take something away from your week. So. Please come out and show out and show support, and you won't be disappointed. It'll get you a head start on the new year of 2020 because we already starting on 2020 as well. Exactly. Say that code one more time so people can get it one more time. Right? The offer code is Reginald, R E G I N A L D. It's my first name. You'll you'll see it all over the <laughs> all over the place after this interview is posted. So if you want to come get 50 percent off, type in Reginald and um right. get in half off on me. That's right. People, my code is JMP Charlotte. Just type in JMP Charlotte. Reggie said you're gonna get 50% off the tickets. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's crazy. 50% off is no joke. You're gonna be surrounded by brilliant, brilliant brown and black women. Mm-hmm. Okay. Giving you their story, sharing their story so you can help better yourself. It's a, it's a network. It's communications, it's it's a great vibes, it's mm-hmm. it's great mm-hmm. energy, it's 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 a movement. This is the third annual too. I'm happy to be part of it. It's so young, yes, sir. and and I hope to be part of it for years to come. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm gonna be doing a session on podcasting, so I'm gonna keep that real simple, stupid. Um, it's not hard. You, it, 45 minutes together with my group, and you know I have Q and A as well built into it. So. It's going to be fantastic. But you're going to be talking about mindset and mental health, right? Yes, sir. So, you, people, this this thing is jam-packed. Mm-hmm. It's, it's jam-packed with a whole bunch of information to really get yourself holistically put the fuck together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's no way you can leave this thing without feeling like, man, I'm empowered and... I can move the world. Like you, you absolutely can. Once you leave this session, man, it's a three-day event. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm gonna be there Saturday and Sunday as well. I'll be traveling Friday there. Um, 
and there is going to be a panel as well. Um, so people, you know, get to see us speak and talk about things and ask questions. It's going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal event. And you guys, if you're not in Charlotte, get your butts to Charlotte because yes, you, have, you have to get there. You know what I'm saying? You have to get your tickets now. I, I command it. You have to. You have, you have to buy a ticket. <laughs> 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 I'll be there Saturday and Sunday as well. Um, Saturday I'm going on the self-publishing author, um, you know, panel. So I'll be awesome. there Saturday for that, and then on Sunday, like you said, I'll be there for the uh, Black Mental Health, um, you know, segment. So you guys can get a, a bit of what we have here in this conversation, as well as I can make it more personalized to the individual when we get into the room. So it just come out, guys. It's gonna be one you you won't you won't want to miss. Listen and. We're very friendly people, and don't think we're not approachable. So we're going to be very available to the to the public, to the people who yes, come sir. through, uh, shaking hands, kissing babies, like like we're mayors of the town. You know what I'm saying? We're going to yeah. take Charlotte by storm, right. and um, that's who we are. That's what we do, folks. Like you know, we're, we're normal people, mm-hmm. and we figured something out for ourselves, and we want you to figure it out too to be successful as well. Yes, and sir. and we're going to pass that on to you, folks, man, because we believe you deserve it. Yes, sir. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot. You know what I'm saying? Reggie, this has been a blast, bro. I'm enjoying it. You know, we got to keep in contact, bro. Yes, sir. I always try to make sure, especially if I figure out, if I if I find something that's going to add value to you and I can help support, like, don't hesitate to ask. I always try to reach out to people and just looking to serve all the time, just looking to serve and seeing which, whichever way I can help someone get to where they're trying to get to in life and, you know, just looking to leave my mark and impact, man. I swear that's all I'm here for is to serve the people. That's it. And then once you have that attitude of serving the people, a lot of good shit tends to happen. I believe it. A lot of good shit. Tell people about your podcast. What's the name of your podcast? Um, my podcast, the Black Mental Health Podcast. If you Google it, I should pop up. I know I will. Um, and again, we just bring different guests on and um, talk about uh, mental health within the black community and just finding ways to share stories and helps that you will feel better and not alone. And we just had the Sonia, the so, Sonia, the student loan doctor, and how student loans are affecting people within our community in regards to mental health. It's the silent financial killer that no one talks about. Um, so you guys, I got more episodes like that, and just you know, just support and help send it to a friend so that they can find a way to get mentally healthy as well. So again, it's the Black Mental Health Podcast. And you can find that at ReginaldAHoward.com or typing in on Google and you'll find it somewhere. That's dope. People, I'm going to have the, all his links in the description below. Um, just to give you guys, again, the information for the conference in Charlotte. It's September 20th to the 22nd. It's called Love Me 2019. That's also the hashtag, hashtag Love Me 2019. And people... Go to lovingme2019.eventbrite.com to get your tickets today. You have to get it now, like I said. Give me the bombers joint in Charlotte that weekend. And if you don't get it, you're going to be missing out on your future. You're going to be missing out on a chance to really take control of your dreams and your passions for the first time. This is going to be your key to that lock to just unravel everything you've been going through to move forward. It's going to be a fucking blast, man. I can't wait for this shit, man. Me neither. I'm excited, man. <laughs> I'm excited. Come all the way from Philly, man. So I'll be there. I think we're coming in Friday around or maybe Thursday. I don't know. We still decide. We're driving. No, I'm, I'm so. driving up from Atlanta on yeah. uh, on Friday. My in-laws live in, in Charlotte, so it works okay. perfect. So I'm going to stay with them. I don't have okay. to so. But uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, shout out definitely. to Tierra Nicole. Hey. You know, Tierra. Can't forget her. Oh, she's the bomb. Tierra, right. Tierra was a guest on my podcast. We connected. And just to show the power of that network and connection, that's how I got to get to the, to, to the, to the conference. So people, like, it works. Networking, talking to people, befriending people, getting to know folks. Their network becomes your network. Opportunities tend to come up. Yo, like, it's real. Right. It's just real. You have to go after it. So, right. Nicole, you are the bomb. She's great. She has her own books as well. Um, she, she's one of the folks that's, that's throwing this, this, this beautiful event. 
Um, so definitely please support, support, support. And even if you can't make it, maybe you get a ticket for somebody else. Maybe you get a ticket for somebody else that really needs it and encourage them to go uh, to see where they can get out of it. Because you, you will get something out of any of these beautiful people who are speaking. There's, there's a lot of people talking. So mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get something out of this conference. I, I guarantee you that. So You'll walk away with so many nuggets. I can promise that. And if, if we can't promise it for everybody else, we, we can definitely promise it from us that you'll walk away with some nuggets. Absolutely. 100% <laughs> guarantee, brother. Man, Reggie, you're the bomb, bro. We got to stay connected. Um, let me know when I can get in your podcast. We'll schedule something up. Yes, I'll, sir. I'll jump in your joints to support you. Whatever you need from me, yo, just DM me, let me know, and I got you back, bro. thousand percent. I appreciate it. And I said, I said, uh, same for me, man. Like, I really want to support you and make sure we both get big as possible. And, you know, more importantly, making an uh, uh, impact because I love the platform you got. I love the perspective you're coming from. And I, again, I appreciate it. And thank you for having me on because it, it was a great experience, great conversation. Yo, two motherfuckers with real talk. That's what we got. Real talk. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we're going to stay connected. Yeah, don't die, brother. Peace. And like I said, we're going to catch up. We're going to meet up. We're going to have a podcast. We're Reggie at the conference. So you guys can be the actual live audience when we're having the actual podcast <laughs> over yes, at, uh, at, at, at the event. So Reggie, sir, thank you again. You're amazing. No problem, man. Thank and you for having me. We'll stay connected, brother. All righty. All right. Peace. Peace.